Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and I have some fun coastal pumpkin DIYs for you today. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the bell to be notified when I post, and a thumbs up is always appreciated. Okay, let's get into it. I am using um, this spring sign from the Dollar Tree. It can be anything. And I like to have my backs not be all crazy. And I want to use the back for my signs. So I don't want the spring is in the air on the back. So I'm just using some of that cheap contact paper from the Dollar Tree that looks like wood. And I had a piece that was almost the right size. And I just put that on the back and just use my sanding block from the Dollar Tree to cut that off for an exact fit on the back of my sign. This is an easy trick. I know um, other people, there's lots of ways you can do it, but I always like to have my projects. Um, it gives them more of a finished feel when the back of it doesn't look all crazy like that. And we have a perfect surface to work with here. Now, I kind of want it to look like um, a shiplap, but like kind of like a coastal. And so I'm using this ivory chalk paint by Waverly and I'm giving it a really sloppy coat. I don't want really good coverage. I want some of that wood to show through. And so I'm just using a foam brush and giving it one coat and um, speeding up the drying that chalk paint dries so fast with one of these dryers. And you can see along the top and the bottom that I was sloppy and like a little bit of the brown shows through and that's kind of what I was going for. So that is that. Now I want it to look kind of like shiplap. So I'm using my little square from the Dollar Tree and just an ink pen. And I'm just gonna draw on where it would look like there would be like boards going up and down. I'm trying to, I just kind of estimate my first one. And then I go back since I have a ruler and measure and see how big I had my boards and then I measure to make the other ones kind of even. Doesn't matter though. They can, <laughs> they don't have to be even. And I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to leave it like that. That's going to be like the um, illusion that there are different boards. And then I'm going to go in and just distress it a bit with some of this antique wax by Waverly. And my little chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going along the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna go around the edges. And by edges, I'm also going around the edges of my boards, right? So where I had my little ink drawings and just kind of keeping the distressing all in one direction. And that's all there is to it. It is ready. I can reuse the little hanger that was on there before just by poking the little sticks back through. And that is gonna be the back for our pumpkin sign. So I just picked these up at the Dollar Tree the other day. They are metal pumpkin steaks and they had two colors. They had this white and yellow and an orange. I thought this one would be easier to paint. So I am just removing that raffia bow that was on there, trying to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna use some of this agave um, chalk paint by Waverly and just kind of go on all over. I don't want great coverage on this either because I think it's kind of cool how that yellow and white kind of shows through. Um, it's got a really cool texture on there. I think you can kind of see it there as I paint it that really comes through. I really love how this turned out. And so I'm kind of being trying to be a little bit careful around the top that I don't get paint on the stem and the leaves. And basically that's all there is to it. I don't want great coverage, so that looks perfect to me. So just getting that dry, touching up any areas that I thought looked a little sloppy. And I'm gonna attach this pumpkin to that sign, but first I am going to give it more of a coastal feel. So I'm gonna use some of this decorative rope, nautical rope from Dollar Tree. You know I love this stuff. Just snipping off the end because there was a little bit of tape there. And I am just going to attach this where the little seams of the, uh, the lines of the pumpkin go up and down. And I'm just going to fill in that little crease with the rope and attach it with hot glue. And trying to keep this project super easy. So just 
trimming it as I go and gluing the edges. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna do that on all four of the lines. Not really measuring, just gluing it down and then cutting it off at the bottom. Now this rope is a little hard to cut because it's so thick. So I'm using those like thick uh, KitchenAid, kitchen scissors. They work pretty well for this and can go through that tough rope. I love this decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I use it all the time. I think it gives like such a fun um, coastal beachy vibe to things. I really love it. All right, so that's all there is to it. Easy peasy, we got four ropes on there. And we now I'm just going to use that raffia bow that came with it and just glue it back on. Very easy, just using a little fire to burn off any um, loose little fibers. I was being careful though, I didn't wanna catch that raffia on fire. And then I'm just gonna do a light distress with that ivory chalk paint and my um, chunky brush on the leaves and follow that up with just a baby wipe to remove any excess paint, just to give it kind of a distressed look on the little leaves. Now I need to attach it to the sign that we made. And I'm gonna use one of these um, mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree to try to give it um, some more depth there in the center to have something to glue it to. And I'm using a combination of hot glue and um, wood glue to try to attach this because I know that metal and hot glue don't do well together. I probably should have used like E6000 or something like that because I was struggling with this. But I just added a couple more Jenga blocks to give it a little bit more um, depth right there in the middle of the sign. And I'm just gonna hot glue the heck out of it and see if that works. I'm gonna push down on the middle of that metal pumpkin and um, try to get that attached. And be careful with the metal pumpkin and the hot glue because the metal pumpkin got hot. And I finally got it on there, just filling um, up the bottom there with a little bit more hot glue. Then I was thinking that if I went around the pumpkin with a rope too and some hot glue, that would also help to secure the pumpkin to the sign. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just starting at the top, hot gluing, um, right there at the seam between the metal pumpkin and the sign. And I'm glad I did this. I think it um, totally gives it a finished look and it's functional too. So I'm kind of being careful around the little bumpy parts there along the bottom, trying to get it as tight as I can in there. And simply just using hot glue one little section at a time until I make it all the way around. I really wasn't sure where I was gonna go with this project. I knew I wanted blue pumpkin and I really love how this project turned out. It was super easy and um, it's just super fun. And if you're not doing like blue pumpkins, if you're doing more of a classical theme, you could totally do this with the orange one. You wouldn't even have to paint it, the orange um, metal stake. And I'm deciding what I need to do now. See, there's a little bit of space um, at the bottom of the sign. And I kind of wanted to put a word there. And I'm like, do I want to get my Cricut out? And then I'm like, ooh, I have these Scrabble letters from the Dollar General. Let me spell out fall. Well, of course, I'm short an L. I only had one L. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll spell out the word autumn. So of course, I'm short a U. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, plan B. I got found these seashells at the Dollar Tree, so I'll just put some seashells on here. And so I was kind of going through them and seeing what kind they was and kind of lining up for. And then I thought, no, you know, I really kind of want um, a word on the bottom. I do like the idea of seashells, but I really wanted a word. So I am trying and trying to think of what I can do to add a word to the bottom. And then I was like, I'll just paint it. So I'm just using this um, like taupe color paint pen um, from, I got those on Amazon, a pack of so many colors. And they're so easy to paint with that I just wrote fall in cursive and kind of made my lines go off the sides. 
it was a little uneven, so I'm just gonna use one of those shells that we were looking at and hot gluing that in the empty space. And I love how that turned out. Okay, guys, this project <laughs> was a struggle and I almost threw it away halfway through, just full disclosure. So I got this little thankful pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and the paper was kind of loose and I'm like, oh sweet, I'll just peel the paper off. Then I get to the second half here and that side was glued down very well and that paper was like not going anywhere. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I've already started this. <laughs> and I'm gonna make this a stand-up pumpkin. So I kind of wanted to have the back finished and I was planning on working on this side, but no go, I can't get that half of the paper off. So I broke out my power tool, <laughs> the sander, and I'm like, I will try to sand this paper off. And even like with the sander, I could only like partially get it off. But you know what? I was like, that's good enough. <laughs> I try again, I get it down as smooth as I can, but it's just not coming off. And I'm like, that's okay. Um, I will just cover that like I normally do. So I am going and this is sea glass that I found at the Dollar Tree. This is two packages of them. And I thought I could make a pumpkin with sea glass, like um, kind of like a mosaic. So I'm kind of seeing um, what colors there are. I really like that light blue. That's kind of what I was going for. And unfortunately, that was like the fewest of that color than any of them. But here I am just covering up that paper on the back that I couldn't get off with just some more of that cheap contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I just cut off a piece big enough for the pumpkin. And I am just going to attach that. And I'm going to use the same process I did on that last sign where I just attach it. And then I use one of those little sanding blocks from the Dollar Tree to cut that off along the sides. And it did a perfect job um, giving me a perfect cut there so that the back of my project does look finished. And it's personal preference. If you don't wanna finish the back of your sign because you don't think anybody's gonna see it, then you do you. So I, the only part that was a little trippy tricky was around the stem. So I just went ahead and um, cut that off because I'm going to do something with the, st the stem anyway. So that is the back of our piece. And I am ready to add the sea glass to the front. I am just giving it a little touch up there to make sure that I got all the excess vinyl hanging off. And I'm going to attach the sea glass to the pumpkin with that um, caulk from the Dollar Tree. But they were a little dusty from being in that package. And so I'm just using some wet wipes and trying to clean them off. And I'm kind of sorting the colors. I have a little bit of blue. I have a little bit of like the white in there. I have a whole lot of green. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to use green even though I really wasn't planning on it. And then there's also like that royal blue color. And these are really pretty, and that is such a great value to be able to get sea glass from the Dollar Tree. I'm very impressed. And again, this was two packages, and I think that's going to be about enough. So I'm just using that cock to attach my um, pieces, just kind of in a random pattern. I'm just spreading that blue around since I don't have a lot of it. And just attaching that to my pumpkin. Now, I used the cock instead of... Um, hot glue because I was reading that this would work well and you know it was available from the Dollar Tree but I don't know I did have trouble with it so I don't know if I just didn't let it dry good or because I didn't think hot glue would be strong enough because some of these pieces of sea glass were really big and they stuck out pretty far what I'm just doing is just trying to find most of them had a flat edge and that's where I'm applying the silicone caulk and then just kind of going around and filling in any holes, like trying to find a place, kind of like a puzzle, um, that I can fit the piece. And I had to use a lot of those little pieces too, to try to get it full. 
And in the end, I don't know, some of those small pieces are probably covered up. But this, I have never done a mosaic before. And uh, honestly, I had no idea what I was doing with this project. <laughs> it's a miracle that it turned out for real. So I finally got them all on there and then I want to grout it. Now I have this grout left over from a project fixing my shower and it's like a tan um, pre-sanded grout. It's already mixed up. It's in a container and it did require quite a bit of it. Um, and I'm just going through with my little spatula there from the Dollar Tree and just lumping it on there. And then I'm kind of using my hands. I probably shouldn't be touching this stuff, but I'm kind of using my hands and pushing it down in between um, all the sea glass to try to fill it in. And honestly, I am just, you can see some of the pieces are moving around and I don't know if it's because I didn't give it enough time to dry or it, I don't know. But some of them are probably attached to the pumpkin just from this grouting process. <laughs> so I got most of them grouted in there and now I'm just kind of going around the edges and trying to fill up any gaps. I don't want any of the wood to show through on the sides. And oh my God goodness this was such a messy project for real <laughs> okay so I get it all on there and I kind of like dry it real quick because it's said to dry it for like 15 minutes and then wash off like the excess you know from the tile surface if you were using it on tile so I gave it a quick dry with my air dryer the problem that I had was that that really dried the grout onto my sea glass. And I was like, I couldn't get it off. So here I am with a wet kitchen sponge and I am trying to wipe that grout off of my sea glass so that you can see that pretty sea glass shining through and it totally wasn't coming off. So here I am, I think using wet wipes going, oh my goodness, what have I done? So I'm trying several different techniques here. <laughs> I tried a brush. I tried cleaner. I um, was determined I was gonna make this look better. Here I am with the sponge again. I actually took it and ran it underneath water real quick, which kind of made it really wet and really sloppy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I did to this, but you can't see the sea glass because I covered it up in this grout. I am just gonna like, chuck this project but I'm so glad I didn't because it turned out to be probably my favorite project from today because I get to this point and then I realize you know it's supposed to look rustic it's coastal it's not supposed to look perfect it's supposed to look all kinds of cool with the with the white on the green and the white on the blue so I'm just gonna embrace it I got them cleaned off as good as I could with paper towels. I actually went in there, that little bottle is vinegar because I Googled how to get grout off of tile. <laughs> it said to use vinegar and that, that helped a little bit. It probably helped more than anything else I tried. So now I have the challenge of trying to get that grout dry. I got it good and wet when I ran it underwater, which running it underwater, I don't think that really helped, but. I was panicking. So I use my air dryer and just try to speed that up. I love this thing. I got it on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I'll post a link below for that. And just making sure that it is, that all of my sea glass is secure and that it is getting dry. And I'm kind of just pushing it down as I go. And I think I finally have it. Now for the stem, I'm just gonna use some of this twine from the Dollar Tree, a little dab of hot glue, and then I'm just gonna simply wrap that twine around my pumpkin stem. It's a quick, easy way to give it that coastal feel and take care of the problem area, which was the stem for me. And I just go around and I really just could wrap it around until I got to the tip. And then I just needed to use a little hot glue on the tip just to hold the twine in place so it doesn't fall off the end. 
and then I just wrap it around and then I'm just gonna wrap it back down and then um, I can cut that off and glue that to the back. It came with this little metal um, leaf and so I kind of tied that on and I'm just gonna secure that to the back with a little bit of hot glue. And I really like the feel of that. Gives you that coastal vibe. I was trying to figure out how to attach that leaf to it. And then I have some of this um, jute with a wire in it from the Dollar Tree. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect. So I'm just cutting off a little piece of that. And I'm gonna use that to attach that little leaf to the top of our pumpkin. But first I'm gonna use a pen and just give it a little curly curly to make that look like one of those, what are those called? Like tendrils off of a pumpkin. And I'm just gonna use that to secure my leaf on there. And then of course I gotta go in there and give a little distressing to that green leaf. It was a little too green for me. Just using a little ivory chalk paint from Waverly and one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree and a little baby wipe to distress that leaf. I could not believe how well this turned out. Now it's super heavy. So I'm gonna have to make a pretty heavy duty stand. I'm gonna use some of these giant Jenga blocks that I picked up at Five Below. I got a big box of them for $10 there. Um, great little blocks of wood. You can use whatever you've got, but I wanna make sure it's really attached to my sign since it's so heavy. So I'm just cutting off the contact paper um, on the back where I'm gonna attach the stand. And I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and wood glue to glue on the stands and I glue them together first with hot glue and just pop those on. And this gives me a really nice heavy duty stand that holds um, this heavy mosaic pumpkin up with a sea glass. And honestly, this project was a struggle, struggle bus for real, but I absolutely love how it turned out. Look how cute it is. Love it, so unique and worth all the work. <laughs> okay, this last project, oh my gosh. So um, I just ordered a new bed for my master bedroom, and so I'm gonna move my current bed to the guest room. Now what I had in my guest room was the bottom to like a bunk bed that I was kind of using as a couch in the office slash guest bed, and I was taking it apart and I usually donate all of my furniture, but I was like, oh my gosh, all of this wood, wood is so expensive. I'm gonna take this bed apart piece by piece by piece by piece. And it had so much wood. And so that is what I'm using. This is um, one of the little support pieces. And I am just cutting off like a 12 inch piece of that. It's a lot skinnier than these. These were the slats to the bed. Now, most of the slats were in really good condition, but this one was all like really weathered and frayed looking, which I loved. I thought that looked really coastal and really, um, you know, rugged and rough, like something that would be at the beach. So I am gonna use this one. And um, these were the slats to the bed. And so they were all attached with like this fabric and man, they were like stapled on there good. And this was like a full size bed. And so I have so much wood that I can use for projects. Um, I have all the slats and then the wood I had mostly painted um, ivory. And so I'm gonna take that apart too and use it. The crafter in me just could not let all of this wood just go for the donation <laughs> to the curb. So, what I'm doing now is cutting out um, one of the wood slats, which are wider, um, for each side of that first one, which I'm gonna make the stem for our pumpkin, is what we're making out of this. And I'm just cutting these a little shorter than um, the first one. I think I did that 12 inches, maybe these are 10, I can't remember. And once I cut one, I'm just using that to um, measure to, so I can see how long I need to cut the other and that's my jigsaw I'm just using my jigsaw to cut these and these wood were like thick solid wood especially that first piece like it took me a long time to get through the wood because it was so strong very good quality wood I'm so glad I decided to 
put it to good use. Now these were the most gnarly two pieces that I could get off of there. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. So I'm just using my um, electric sander. I've got all my power tools out today. And just kind of, um, I want it to look rustic, but I just want to try to clean up my cuts on the ends and make those not so sharp and crazy looking. And I want the distressed sides up because I want the more distressed, the better. And so I'm just gonna put it together like this, like a square pumpkin. And I am just going to attach um, those together with just a bead of hot glue. I'm gonna reinforce that. So I think that'll be enough to keep it together. And that first piece is taller. You can see that it kind of sticks out. And that's gonna be represent like the stem, the top part there of our pumpkin. So just hot glued those together and it's flat across the back. And then I'm just gonna reinforce that with some of these jumbo popsicle sticks from um, Walmart actually, and a little bit of hot glue just to reinforce that seam and to make it a little bit stronger. Now this project kind of evolved. I was like, I like the wood, but I want it to look like beachy coastal. So I'm gonna use um, my favorite color of chalk paint from Walmart, um, Agave by Waverly. And I'm gonna use that chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. And I am just gonna do a light distress all over to kind of make it look like it was like blue wood at one time and that it's been at the beach and it's all wore and the paint's all wore off. That's kind of what I'm looking. So I'm going all in one direction. I go along the tops and bottoms and all of the edges. This had lots of uh, dimensions with the piece in the middle sticking up further. So I go on the sides of that. And I want a little bit of blue peeking out all over. So I also kind of do the sides, the top, anywhere that you might be able to see. And I just kind of distress that until I am happy with the coverage. Now that blue did dry a little darker than I wanted it to, so I do add some more color to that. But first I'm gonna distress it even more with some of this Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm gonna do this real lightly, just along like the edges, a little bit here and there, just to make it look a little bit more beat up. But I also wanna use it to paint the stem on our pumpkin. So I'm gonna go heavy there on the top part and kind of just go all over and give it a light distressing. And then of course the top of our stem there too. And I just want this to look really rustic and really weathered and really beachy. Now I am gonna do the same kind of stand for this as I did for the mosaic pumpkin. I'm gonna use a couple of those giant Jenga blocks from Five Below combination of wood glue and hot glue and I put them on there and I hadn't decorated the pumpkin yet and it wasn't sitting exactly the way I wanted it to so before it dried too much I went ahead and just popped those off because I'm like I haven't even decorated this thing yet like what am I doing <laughs> so I just popped those back off before they got a chance to dry and I am going to dress this pumpkin up a little bit I'm gonna use some more of that wired um, jute from the Dollar Tree. And I kind of just wrapped it around itself and then just wrapped it around a little bit to the top. Once I get enough on there, I'm just going to um, string that through to kind of tie it off. And I'm gonna leave those two ends on there because I'm gonna use that same technique and I'm just gonna use an ink pen and give a little curly cue for the little tendrils to stick off the top of our pumpkin. And I'm doing two on this one because I don't have any leaves or anything to attach to that. And then I thought it needed um, a little bit more brightness. So I'm just gonna go in and do a little distressing with this um, lighter color of blue. It's called um, Pool, I think, Chalk Paint by Waverly. And just brighten it up just a little bit because it was just a little bit too dark for my um, decor. I'm kind of just kind of going all over where I had the other color of blue and just brightening it up just a little bit. Now I got this burlap ribbon um, in the fall section at Dollar Tree and I am just cutting off a little piece and then pulling out the sides just to give it a little rough look and I'm gonna attach a sand dollar that I picked up at the Dollar Tree this summer. 
to the front to give it even more of a coastal feel. Just gonna attach that burlap ribbon with a little bit of hot glue. And I thought that that would be fun just to add a little bit more texture to the little decor piece that I'm adding on there. And I'm just gonna attach that sand dollar um, with hot glue. I got a package of these. I think there was like three maybe in a package. And they're really cute. I'm just making sure my stem is nice and brown and I kind of want it peeking out like that and I love how this turned out. I wanted a little tiny decor piece up there so I'm using some of these shells I picked up at the Dollar Tree with a little bit of hot glue and just gluing a blue shell onto the top just to give a final touch. So now I can go again and try to attach my little legs and again I'm using these giant Jenga blocks from Five Below. You can use whatever you have or you can make it into a hanging sign super easily by attaching twine or a hanger to the back and I am gluing them up just a tiny bit so that the um, pumpkin will kind of slightly lean back. It looks better that way. Um, I went all the way to the bottom the first time and it set to a little too straight. So this makes it lean back just a tiny bit and it makes it look really good um, on the display. Time for final reveal. Here is our blue pumpkin fall sign that I made out of that metal stake from the Dollar Tree and just uh, any sign from the Dollar Tree and I just painted fall on there and attached rope to give it that fun coastal feel. And here's that project that really put me through the ringer, um, that sea glass mosaic pumpkin, using just a pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and sea glass from the Dollar Tree. I love how this turned out. It's my first fall decor I've got on these shelves, so they're kind of lonely. And here is my reclaimed wood pumpkin. You can use whatever old wood you have laying around. The gnarlier the better and that little sand dollar on there to give it a little coastal touch. I really hope you loved these projects today and got some great ideas to make some pumpkins of your own. If you haven't got a chance to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I'm a new channel and struggling to grow a little slow after my vacation and the like is always appreciated. Thanks. Bye everybody.